Have you ever wondered what set off the biggest global conflict of the 20th century? Well, put on your detective hat, because we're about to unravel the mystery of how World War I began. It's a story of secret societies, political alliances, and one fateful day in Sarajevo that changed the course of history. So, grab a cup of tea, sit back, and get ready for a wild ride through the past. This is the story of how the Great War got started, and trust me, it's not your average history lesson. The Assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand Okay, so let's start off with the main event that set everything in motion, the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Now, you might be wondering, who the heck is Archduke Franz Ferdinand? Well, let me tell you, he was the heir to the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Think of him as the Prince Harry of his time, but with a lot more power. On June 28, 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife, Sophie, were visiting Sarajevo, Bosnia, which was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. They were there to inspect the troops, and all was going well until a group of young Bosnian men, who were part of a secret society called the Black Hand, decided to take matters into their own hands. One of the members, Gavrilo Princip, stepped up and shot the Archduke and his wife at point-blank range. Now, you might be thinking, wow, that's pretty intense. And you're right, it was. But it's also important to note that Gavrilo Princip and the Black Hand were not just a bunch of random lunatics. They were part of a larger movement that wanted Bosnia to be independent from the Austro-Hungarian Empire. So, in a way, this assassination was an act of rebellion. Gavrilo Princip was only 19 years old when he committed the assassination. He was arrested and sentenced to 20 years in prison, but he died in prison due to tuberculosis. The Alliance System Alright, so now that we've covered the incident that set everything in motion, let's talk about the alliances that made it all worse. It's like a game of Jenga, but instead of blocks, it's countries, and instead of a tower, it's Europe. Before WW1, European countries formed alliances with each other for protection and support. These alliances were like a big web of, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine, agreements. The two main alliances were the Triple Entente, France, Russia, and Britain, and the Central Powers, Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. When the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand happened, these alliances came into play. Austria-Hungary, being the country that the Archduke was from, wanted to take action against Serbia, where the assassins were from. Russia, being an ally of Serbia, mobilized its army to support Serbia. Germany, being an ally of Austria-Hungary, declared war on Russia. And before you know it, the whole continent was at war. The alliance system was like a game of dominoes, once one country fell, the rest followed. The reason why this happened is because they were connected by treaties. Now, you might be wondering, why did these countries form these alliances in the first place? Well, there were a few reasons. One of them was imperialism, where countries were competing to expand their territories and gain more resources. Another reason was nationalism, where countries were trying to prove that their country was superior to others. It's like high school all over again, but with countries instead of people. And that's the story of how the alliance system contributed to the outbreak of World War I. It's a complex web of agreements and motives, but it's essential to understand if we want to fully grasp how the Great War began. The Schlieffen Plan Now that we've covered the alliances, let's talk about a little something called the Schlieffen Plan. The Schlieffen Plan was a strategy developed by the German Empire to defeat France and Russia in a quick and efficient way. The plan was to quickly invade and defeat France, and then turn east to defeat Russia. The idea was to end the war quickly before the Russian army could fully mobilize. When the war broke out, Germany put the Schlieffen Plan into action. They invaded Belgium, which was a neutral country, and quickly moved through France. The plan was working well, and the German army was making quick progress. But then, things started to go wrong. The Russian army mobilized faster than expected, and the German army had to split its forces to fight on two fronts. The Schlieffen Plan was named after its creator, Alfred von Schlieffen, who was a German general and chief of the Imperial German General Staff. The Schlieffen Plan ultimately failed, and the war became a prolonged trench warfare. The German army was not able to defeat France quickly, and the Russian army was able to hold off the German army on the Eastern Front. The Schlieffen Plan was intended to make the war short, but it ended up prolonging it and caused significant casualties. So there you have it, the Schlieffen Plan, a strategy that ultimately backfired. 
It's a reminder that war is unpredictable and that things don't always go according to plan. Conclusion In conclusion, we've gone through the main events and factors that led to the outbreak of World War I. From the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, to the alliances formed by European countries, to the Schlieffen Plan, we've covered it all. It's important to note that the causes of WW1 were complex and multifaceted. It wasn't just one event or one country that caused it, but a combination of different factors. And as we've seen, sometimes things don't go as planned, and things can spiral out of control quickly. So, thank you for joining us on this journey through history. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more history content. We'd also love to hear your thoughts on the video in the comments section.